All right, so 2024 is here. We're seeing a super unique market right now. We're seeing multifamily. If you're invested in multifamily, you've seen struggles, particularly in the value add deal. I talked to some investors that have multiple capital calls that they're dealing with. And maybe you're wondering, hey, what is gonna happen in 2024? And most importantly, what do I do with my money as an investor? We're gonna get into that. We're seeing in Atlanta, an area where we own, the same property 24 months apart, so from 24 months ago, is worth 42% less. Uh, why is that? Well, of course, interest rates have gone higher and it makes it more difficult to buy, particularly if you're doing value add if the occupancy is below 90%. So we're gonna talk about some opportunities inside, outside of real estate, some of my predictions. This is really my key predictions of what to watch out for and most importantly, what you can do to take advantage of it. So let's jump in, let's go. All right, so my name is Bronson Hill. I'm the CEO of Bronson Equity. We've got 200 million in multifamily assets. We also have ATM machines, car washes, oil and gas. We create videos like this. And again, none of this is investing advice. It's just uh, my opinion and education. So uh, the first thing is my prediction for 2024 is that recession fears will linger. Now, a recession, this is really interesting. Uh, a recession has been defined as two quarters of negative GDP growth. And this happened in 2022. Q1 and Q2 were one, negative 1 1.6 and negative 0.9. So we had it two in a row, but the Fed came out and said, oh, hey, you know what? Uh, this you know, kind of looks like a recession, but it's really not a recession. The labor market's good. So because the labor market's good, it's not a recession. Well, we know, you know, we've really learned, hopefully you learn as well, not to trust the federal government when it comes to things like statistics, the CPI, or we call it the CP lie, as well as things like this. So we were in a recession, we we're able to kind of come out of it, but you know, data comes out a little bit late. And so these re recession fears are there, they're gonna continue to linger. We used to have recessions, a recession was a healthy way to kind of let things come back to where they should be, uh, kind of cut the fat out of the economy. Uh, some people lose their jobs, unfortunately, but it allowed for what was created to be better. Now we just have so much debt. I mean, in what, as the time of this video, we're at 34 trillion of debt. Just a few months ago, we were at 31 trillion. So literally in like three or five, three or four months, we've gone up a few trillion dollars. So the spending is getting out of control. And so there's this great uncertainty when it comes to what things are gonna look like for this year. And I think that's going to continue. That uncertainty is going to continue. Now this uncertainty, as an investor, there's actually a real benefit to this because when the consensus is uncertainty, what it means is that if you are a long-term investor, you can take advantage of it. Warren Buffett has this quote. He says, uncertainty is the friend of the buyer of long-term values. Uncertainty is the friend of the buyer of long-term values. What that means is if you have a long-term approach, it doesn't matter. And actually it's better for you because things are cloudy. And he has another quote in there. He says, yeah, when things are cloudy, there's a big premium given to clarity. So when things are unclear, uh, as long as the long-term fundamentals are sound, it's a great time to invest. So I think it's a great time to look at things, be open to deals right now. We're seeing deals uh, for real estate come down all over the board. I mentioned that example of that multifamily in Atlanta. We're starting to see that, and that's something to pay attention to. The second prediction I have is that we will not have a soft landing. Now, the Fed has two tasks, right? Their tasks are to try to keep unemployment down and also to control uh, the uh, you know inflation. Those are really their two mandates, which is really hard. If you ever had a goal and a job and it's like, oh, we're gonna add two goals that are kind of counter to each other, it's a very, very difficult thing to do. It's like, I'm gonna have you land this plane uh, you know, but you're gonna be blindfolded, right? It's, it's, it's a very difficult thing to do. Maybe not quite the best illustration, but in a way it is. It's a very difficult thing to achieve. And landings typically, it's been said that the, you take the, the stairs going up or the escalator up when it comes to investments, and it's, it's the elevator coming down, right? So usually when things come down, they don't come down just nice, soft. It's not like the, the landing of that guy, the miracle on the Hudson where he landed the plane right on the water and everybody survived is incredible, right? Um, and there was just the way that came down. This is not the Fed. The Fed is not gonna be able to achieve that. And even the, uh, the Fed, some of the Fed uh, leaders, you can see they, they've had some, some questions of that as well. And so um, we don't know, again, that also creates uncertainty and it also creates investing opportunities because again, when things you know go into panic mode or something happens, and I think within the next 12 months, there's gonna be some major thing that's gonna happen. It's gonna cause asset prices to fall or maybe interest rates will start to come down again because of this desire to kind of smooth things out if there is any bumpiness uh, you know, in, in kind of trying to land the plane a bit to bring inflation, to bring rates, normalize, all these things that are going on. So those are kind of the two big predictions. The third thing really is the thing that you can do, and this is what I, I've really been beating this drum pretty hard the last few months. If you've been following this content, you've been following what we do at Bronson Equity, um, is that you know non-real estate investments, look into non-real estate investments. Why is that? Well, 
real estate is really based on debt, how much debt you can get to go buy something. A lot of other things are not. A lot of the things, the ATM business we do is, a, is an all cash business. We buy things in cash. There's no leverage in it at all, right? There's other things, businesses where there is some debt, but usually you can kind of negotiate and you can have seller finances, other things you can do. And, and the debt is not as big of a deal, but real estate, it's so dependent on debt. If it costs me versus, you know, 3% interest rate versus, excuse me, a seven or 8% interest rate, it's going to be a huge difference in the amount I'm able to pay. And so looking, being open to non real estate investments are huge. So, um, you know, I've shared this before. I'm not a big fan of the stock market. Uh, one of the challenges of the stock market, which if you are in the stock market, you've been in the stock market, I'm a recovering stock market investor. Uh, you can raise your hand, make a comment on that as well, if that's you. But if you missed 40 days, uh, Business Insider had this article and they said, if you missed 40 days, 40 specific days over a 20 year period, the last 20 years, um, you would have missed out on most of the returns. And what happens is if there's a crash, a lot of times we don't manage our temperament well. So really what that goes from is, is if you were in over those 20 years, you would have made around a, around a 9% annualized return. That doesn't include fees. That doesn't include other things. I mean, that just includes you mirror the market, which is very difficult to do. It doesn't include volatility. But um, it would have, again, but pulling out just those 40 days, you would have had a minus 1% return. So all your returns are gone. And so if I can buy and sell, and I, I know my own temperament too, like, if things are going down 20%, like I want to sell, I, I don't know, I want to sell. It's actually the best time to put more money in and to invest more. And so I become aware of that, but that's why the stock market is very difficult. There's lots of volatility. You've got to be okay with ups and downs and you've really got to manage your own temperament. And so that's the challenge. A lot of investors miss kind of those best times to actually be invested. Um, recently, I went to a mergers and acquisition conference where they talk about buying businesses. Uh, if you follow Cody Sanchez, this is the kind of stuff that she's talking about. Uh, there's a website called Biz Buy Sell. You'll find companies that are selling at one to three times earnings. A lot of the boomers have a business and you have to be a little careful that it's not a job. You know, Michael Gerber from the book, The E-Myth, he talks about, you know, if, if you just simply are working in your business, you don't own a business, you own a job, right? So, um, you know, there are businesses like that and they just require somebody in there. But uh, a business, the one to three times earnings, it means you could pay a million dollars. A lot of that's financed. You could maybe put uh, just a small amount down, 100, 200, 300K and finance the rest. And some of these businesses are producing, uh, you know, a 300 to, uh, you know, a million, you know, it's just almost the same amount that what, what the business actually costs, which is incredible. So especially if you leverage it, you could potentially find a situation where you could get into that you had almost no money down and you're really able to do very, very well with that over time. So I love businesses. That's why, um, you know, and again, the challenge here is we don't want to get you in a place where you're operating a business unless you want to, um, which is fine. But for a lot of people, and a lot of you, you guys, you have a, a business, you've got, you're, you're a physician, you're doing something that your time is incredibly valuable. So how do you, you know, scale up uh, and do more without taking more of your time. And it's what I talk about in my book, which is on the shelf behind me over here, <laughs> wrong way behind me, um, about firing yourself. How do you scale that up? And the book talks about that. And this is the idea of passively investing. So we do ATM machines, car washes, oil and gas. We have some other unique things. We've got a real estate debt fund coming out soon. And just ways to get your money working for you where you don't have to work for money. So be open to non-real estate stuff. And just to sum it up here, uh, there's gonna be challenges this year. There's gonna be, I, I don't know if there's necessarily be blood in the streets, but there's gonna be some definite buying opportunities. My idea is don't have your money just parked on the sidelines doing nothing. There are great opportunities where your money can be liquid or you get your money in 90 days and you're just, you're available, but you're getting a return, a, a pretty decent return higher than treasuries on that. And there are options with that, with debt funds, like I mentioned ours that we're starting soon. And so, um, you know, these are all uh, options out there and just, you know, get your money working for you and continue to be open and be learning. So uh, that's what I hope for you this year. Uh, Warren Buffett has this quote as well, as you tell, I quote Buffett a lot, but he says, a prediction about the direction of the stock market tells you nothing about where stocks are headed, but a whole lot about the person doing the predicting. And that's kind of what I'm saying here too, is I can't tell you exactly what direction every asset's gonna go, but what I can tell you is get invested in the right type of assets that are clear for the long term, even if they're not necessarily clear for the short term. Um, I wanna share this uh, video with you of how to leave your job and stop working. It talks about how to get started passively investing, how to bet deals, how to walk through the process of making it work optional for you. So check out that out up here. And then if you haven't joined our investment club, you're not gonna hear about these great deals. We've got some amazing, amazing stuff in the pipeline. I've never been so excited about our deal flow as I am right now. So check it out. Uh, multifamily, oil and gas, ATM machines, car washes. We've got a couple of new things I can't even talk about yet, but they are awesome. And by the time this video comes out, you'll be able to uh, learn about those. Um, and so thanks again for taking the time to educate yourself. I look forward to seeing you on the next uh, video.